Hi Malaka. Hi Harley. Hi everybody listening. Hi guys. Welcome back to Sonder and Salt, the weekly food podcast about the, the magic, magic of, of eating. eating. You keep getting more <laughs> intro and I don't know how I feel about it, but okay, here you are. Today we have a very special episode that we are bringing to you guys, joined by a guest again, mm-hmm. none other than Ryan of Barra 22, vegan, gluten-free, taste award-winning, free from products of the year, donuts. Wow. Thank you. Is that is that everything? That's, that's a very good intro. Yeah. <laughs> is that everything yeah. that encompasses your product and who who are you? How did we get here? How do we get here? Yeah. Um. So I am. Well, who am I? That is a very good question. <laughs> yeah. So I'm born and raised in London, mm-hmm. South East London, South East Londoner. So I was born in Greenwich, uh, raised in Brockley, Catford, and I now live in Borough Twenty Two, which is the Royal Borough of Greenwich. Mm. Okay. Uh, this is Twenty Second Borough, according to Wikipedia, Twenty Second yeah. Borough in London. I love a Wikipedia. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Went to there, gave me the answers. So yeah, twenty second borough in London, and that's why the name of the business is called Borough Twenty Two. Not we're not in Borough Market, like yeah. nothing to do with nothing Borough. Market. My mum did ask me that actually. She said, I've never seen him, but let me know which stand. <laughs> like, it's not in Borough Market. Yeah, that's like. good. She's like a step behind. I've had people who are there. Like I've really? been here. I've been searching. <laughs> I cannot find you anywhere. I'm not. I'm not there. Oh, okay. Not, we're not in Borough Market. <laughs> Nothing to do with Borough Market. Uh, we did have a little um, back and forth with with Borough Market yeah. really? the legal team. Yeah, when we tried to trademark our name. Yeah. They well, it's the lawyers, so it's not. Okay. I wouldn't yeah, say it's yeah. Borough Market themselves. It's their lawyers. They were like, no, you can't have it. They represent. Yeah. Things. Yeah, they said no, but then we charmed them, man. And a few letters later, they were like, no, no, we appreciate your approach yeah. yeah have the name you just Aww. can't do anything in borough market like okay say that you're well, affiliated yeah, 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 yeah. which is cool yeah it's cool but so, it's fine um, there's plenty more plenty more fish in the sea exactly yeah exactly. markets to conquer other than borough market exactly. Exactly. exactly so that's the name that's, that's the name borough 22 so borough 22 what is the story behind borough 22 so i have no baking experience whatsoever yeah. like i'm just greedy and i like <laughs> sugar that's basically it <laughs> that's right? how every baker's journey I think that's starts how it. most people start yeah so it was around the time when uh you had like the great british bake-off uh was like just starting mm-hmm um, and we were baking a lot of cakes, like everyone was on that hype. I think there was a cupcake boom as well. So you had the Hummingbird, mm-hmm. Rose Bakery, mm-hmm. all those little um, places popping up. Um, so I just started baking because I'm greedy. Like so can you bake other, do you bake other things then? Uh, not really. Yeah. Like I haven't got the patience to bake like layer cakes. Yeah. I've made a couple in my time, but cupcakes were small. They were cute. Yeah. Um, and they were easy, like yeah. kind of foolproof. So we used to bake them and bring them into work. Um, and then about the same time, like my wife started a blog called The London Mother. So it's everything to do with parenting in London, basically. Uh-huh. She had a beauty blog before for women of colour. It's called 32 Boroughs of Beauty. I gave her the name for Bar- that. Borough, oh, borough, nice. I gave her the yeah. name for that. That's Branding how I linked, is linked strong. Name, exactly. Did Borough Market get onto her as well? No, no, they didn't. They didn't. <laughs> they didn't. She, they used to, she used to get like loads of makeup, like loads of yeah. beauty products, but not for her. Like, kind oh, of like, okay. Like, read my blog. Right. Like, yeah. You know that this shade is not for yeah, her. Like, yeah, why are you sending yeah, me this yeah. stuff? <laughs> and then she's like, "Well, actually, what do we need as parents with two young children? Yeah. We need stuff for the kids to do. So let me just start a blog on uh, parenting, and it's turned yeah. into like an online magazine. Wow! So um, we was getting invited out to review all these different places in and around London, like right, trampoline right, right. parks. Yeah. And the one I always reference is um, like advanced screenings of films, like mm-hmm. kids' films. So Sunday morning, we go up to Leicester Square. Like going to whatever cinema it is, get it, they get their face painted, you get balloon animals. And there was always like breakfast treats, like yeah. croissants, biscuits, and they couldn't have anything. Why? Because so they should... were allergic to dairy. Okay. okay. So like, your children have dairy allergies? Yeah, okay. yeah. So they've got dairy. I've got a slight dairy intolerance. I think uh, most people... Dairy avoidant. Dairy avoidant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dairy avoidant. I'll pick and choose yeah. like, which ones. <laughs> Um, so, and then my wife is dairy intolerant and gluten intolerant. Okay. So it'd just be like murder. Like my son was two at the time. <laughs> he was like really, really advanced, like yeah. from his sister, but he'd be in this place, like asking people, has he got dairy? Yeah. Aww. Yeah. And they'd be like, man, this is like torture for them. Yeah. Imagine like they're in this space. All these other kids are there, yeah. like grabbing whatever, eating whatever, stuff in their face and they can't have anything because it would make him sick. So that used to like really like upset me. And then afterwards, we'd go out, we'd be in central London. So I'd be like, well, let's, I don't know, go to Pret or go to wherever. And it's like, well, they'd have stuff that was gluten-free, but it would have loads of dairy in it. Yeah. They'd have stuff that was dairy-free that would just be filled with gluten. Yeah, filled with gluten, yeah. And then you get one 
you go to maybe Planet Organic or something like or Whole Foods and you get one treat. Oat bar. Oat bar. Yeah. <laughs> Oat bar. <laughs> Either that or a banana. Yeah. That's it. It's like... <laughs> And you pay like over the odds for this treat, right? Yeah. yeah. On the promise. And I'd see it so many times on the promise that this thing is going to deliver. It's not hitting. And it's just, no, <laughs> not hitting. You just see like the, the, the moisture just being sucked <laughs> from the throat down. And it, it pass me the water. And it's just like, just turns to like a sandy consistency. And it's just, in their mouth. Yeah. It's just like, oh, oh man. And I was just like, well, why is no one doing anything? Like, yeah. all right. For the kids, at least, like dairy, it's so easy to replace dairy. Yeah. Like, why has no one, like, given that as an offering? It can't be my kids are the only ones that have a dairy intolerance. So I was like, Bunnett, let me just go in the kitchen. How hard can it be to, like, replicate something yeah, like yeah. that? Yeah. And it was, that was, dairy was the first foray. Mastered that quite quickly for yeah. them. And then it was like, oh, no, let me try and do something glute with gluten free as well. And I thought it would be just. You thought it was going to be a breeze. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just give me the doves, man. Like, yeah. Doves free flour, just sprinkle it all over everything. Free EE. Yeah. 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 It's like these rock cakes that came out, man. <laughs> just. And kids are brutally honest. Yeah. So you could tell by their face when they put it in their mouth, they're like, they weren't. This ain't it. it. Disgusting. <laughs> like clawing at their tongue and yeah. stuff to get it out. And it's like, okay, this is different. Like, mm. there's, a, like there's a science behind this. Yeah. I think it was a time like Heston. Uh, come out with his series so I was like fascinated by the science of mm-hmm. foods that's interesting um, you say that because we were talking in um, the flavour episode mm. that we did a couple of weeks back about how scientific food actually is yeah. and to really and about Hest- and about um, Hest- um, Fat Dark, Fat Dark. And, uh, yeah. the work that Heston Ex- does experiential yeah but just like having an appreciation for the science of food can really yeah. elevate your cooking experience and, yeah, yeah yeah absolutely absolutely and, and it, that was what really helped me with um trying to nail like recipes that were gluten free, that were decent. Yeah. Um and yeah, there was a lot of trial, a lot of error, more error um than trials. Yeah. Um and what made you go donuts? <laughs> well it's just I just thought I did brownies first of all. Okay. And then like I tried to so it, it I had a, like an ultimatum. I was making all these brownies, like these cakes and stuff. And the ingredients were expensive. Yeah. You couldn't just go into Tesco and get them. You'd have to go up to Whole Foods or yeah. get them online or whatever. I was buying what um, Booker, I was going home oh, right, Booker, okay. like to get all my chocolate. So stuff. I didn't even know about Booker. Yeah, it's like on my doorstep in Charlton. I didn't even know about. Oh, uh, that. that's the nearest wholesaler to me because everyone was putting me onto Costco. Yeah, and I was like, hmm. it's not cheap. Like yeah. it's not, and it's not in. It's not ingredient. It's brand. Yeah, and I was like, I need butter, like raw ingredients. I need chocolate. I need sugar. Yeah, and then I think I reached out to Muller because they at once had a plant in Dagnum. Yeah, um, but they were not like willing to sell to like just. Any old, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. any old person yeah. and then um, like even flour well for me obviously different using like normal flour like Shipton yeah. Mill and stuff like that and again they want you to buy like bulk hundreds of yeah, kilos yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. you're b- trying to buy stuff in these yeah. places it, it's mad like it, even like a kilo of flour and you'd use it for this one recipe and then that's it I could probably wouldn't touch it for three four months yeah. and then the stuff was expiring wasting a lot of money and then when I did make stuff, you'd make so many. They could only eat like yeah. so, much. so much. And if you didn't eat it like fresh within a few hours, it was like the, the next day it's dead. Yeah. You're trying to eat it up. <laughs> you just take it out and it just disintegrates in your hand. And it's just like half of it's left in the microwave or whatever. So it was, she was like, stop making, my wife was like, stop making all this stuff. Like, I appreciate it, but stop making all this stuff because we can't eat all of it yeah. or sell it. And she's a, she'd started her business. So she'd right. left her work, started the London mother. We've seen other bits and pieces. She's like the entrepreneur of the family. So I was like, okay, let's let's give it a go. So I went on Facebook, joined a few groups, and I quickly found out that um gluten free brownies is like bananas and grapes. Yeah, I was gonna say like when you said brownies, does. I was gonna say thank God you didn't go down yeah. that way because the brown it's it's a bit boring, to yeah. be honest. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. it's just I mean they've got that down. Yeah, yeah. exactly. The I vegan think- brownie was good, but the gluten free one was dead on, to be honest with you. It was <laughs> There's just so much like I guess like just taking it back for a second in terms of baked goods mm. and we've spoken our favorite word on this podcast is standardization yeah we, <laughs> but we love standardization yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like a brownie is a brownie a donut is a donut yeah. but like cakes have range carrot cake is not victoria sponge yeah and whatever okay. but i think with brownies there's so much range like i think yeah. you can get away with actually selling a mediocre brownie like a lot of places do they do they do yeah because people are like oh no it's my preference it's my yeah, this it's my yeah. that whereas like a good cake 
okay, it was basics. It's fluffy. It's not hard. It's not yeah. salty. It's not this. A good donut. There's rules. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's rules to being yeah, a yeah, donut. Yeah. Whereas yeah. a brownie, I'm like, a lot of people get away with selling stuff that's crap. undercooked. Yeah. yeah, just crappy brownies. Just mush. Yeah, yeah. 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 You or like up on this. Raw, mm. yeah, raw no. avocado, <laughs> no. flour free. Okay. Yeah. As long as it tastes chocolatey, I think that's what yeah. it is. People get the chocolate and they think this is this is a brownie, yeah. so brownie. it ticks the box because I'm getting chocolate. Yeah. And yeah. That's but I think it. because there's so much range and there's so many bad ones, I don't even think I'm not being funny. I want to page the time of day. Yeah. I'll just be like, oh, another one, but another one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is it. Another yeah. brownie merchant. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> little donut. You think? Yeah, like, yeah, what? what? This yeah. is it. And it, it, so, so I put out the brownies and it was like, nah, man, everybody does brownies. What yeah. else you got? I was like, oh, uh, I make these donuts. Like, I make this donut recipe. And it was like you said, it was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and then I remember just like, it was just ping, 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 ping. <laughs> so I put the picture up on Facebook. Mm. So my phone was just, it was actually buzzing. It wasn't making that noise. <laughs> um, and it was just kept going. And it was like, right, okay, I'm onto something here. But then it's always like, okay, this is great when I make it. It's great for that day. But then how do I now get this to someone? So I can't necessarily get it to them yeah. overnight. Yeah. Um, so I was like making them and going around London, delivering right. them. Mm-hmm. So I'd have like maybe eight or 10 yeah. orders for the week. And that would take me the whole day. That's how I started. Oh, really? Yeah. But luckily, my dad's a black taxi driver. Okay. So anything further than I could be bothered to go yeah i just had to make sure it was ready by 6 a.m because he'd leave the house at six yeah 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 I'd get up and do all the orders he was taking to like fulham yeah. like these quay 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 places yeah. and then i would take anything that was like small and able agile yeah. before we left the house i was like dad right how'd you carry a cake from the bottom yeah like yeah. yes yeah so that's, how, that's how it gets done yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's hard it's it hard is. it's hard man it's a hustle and all the like um like the fairy tale adventure of it all, it's just like it goes out the window, man. The, the days I was coming, because I, I worked four days a week, I had one day off. Mm-hmm. Um, I had small kids, I was looking after them. The day I had off was just completely finished. I would get up and bake everything on that day. So wait, you mean, so you're saying you had a full-time job outside of donuts that yeah. you were doing four days full a week time. and two kids in the house. Yeah. And then your day off in yeah. very big air quotes yeah. was yeah, yeah. working on donuts. Absolutely. Good grief. So it was a hustle. It was yeah. a mad, mad hustle. Um, but I knew people, like the response I was getting from people was like, yeah, yeah. we love this. And these were the baked donuts. Um, I've actually never tried those ones. No. I just yeah. had the fried ones. I'd give me the fried bud boys. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. In, so just to interject the Bar 22 story, right now, what is the offering? A baked donut and a fried donut? So there's a baked donut, which mm-hmm. we've done for like the past eight and a half years. Okay. Yeah. And then a fried donut, which I always wanted to do. Right. Because in my mind, I'm probably doing myself a disservice, but yeah. the baked donut, even though it is award winning, it's won a great taste awards. It's not a true donut. Yeah. So it's like a cake. Who is that? Like who is that donut. for? Is that for like a specific dietary need? A baked donut? Because so I don't think I've even heard of a baked donut until I saw it on your website. So you get like you you, you get people that make cake donuts. Oh. Okay. Um, See, so that is a in thing. A pan. Yeah, yeah, mm. that is a thing, but um, that was for. Uh, people who are gluten free and okay. vegan specifically like m- mainly gluten free because I used to put uh, non-vegan toppings on them yeah um, but then I just got fed up with people asking me questions <laughs> it's like which one I'm vegan as well which one's gonna have it's like you can have that one that one and that one yeah. I'm just like nah just make it all vegan and then yeah. just, just have whatever you want so that was the aim but in my heart of hearts it was like this is good yeah it's great when it comes out the oven dip it in oil roll it in sugar whatever but this is not a true donut. Yeah. So I was always trying, like repeatedly over that this eight and a half year period to get to a fried yeast raid fr- uh, fried donut, um, which I did. I cracked last year. It was on April thirtieth last year. <laughs> so those donuts are only a year old. Only a year old. And those are the donuts that won the free from all. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's mad. Yeah. It's mad. It is mad. It's like um, but I know, like I know what a good donut is. Yeah. I know what a good. Uh, vegan and gluten free donut is yeah. like I know what th- that that experience I've seen the disappointment yeah like, first hand <laughs> yeah um, so I know what I was trying to get to yeah um, and it is it's like the science and everything like I couldn't have done it eight and a half years ago mm-hmm. I didn't know enough about gluten free ingredients yeah. I didn't even know some of the green ingredients that I use uh, like what they do what their properties are and it is it's just over time doing the same thing 
and just exposing yourself to different elements. And it's just your brain is always working. Yeah. It's Kylie's mad. brain does not switch off. The brain does not switch off. <laughs> so what does it take, without giving us a secret sauce, yeah. what does it take to develop a free from product of the year when in like such an area which could not be done before, like in terms of fried dough yeah. for this kind of audience? You said that you don't have a baking background. So did you have to go to college? Did you did like... What does it take to get to this level yeah. of understanding how to produce this product? You're never going to catch me trying to make my own donut. I'll put the money to those types <laughs> yes. of things. Yeah, yeah. I just need to know that it's guaranteed. I need to know that it's standardised. I need yeah. to know that I'm going to get that experience yeah. and it's hitting every how, time. How did you, how did you yeah. personally get there? Uh, so exposure to like ingredients, just seeing what other people have done. Um, is that like, secret eating there? Is that what you're saying? Is it you, are you turning up in disguise as not the guy who makes the best donuts to, <laughs> to other places and being like, hmm, yeah. hmm. Yeah, so, so it is literally a lot of sampling like other people's yeah. products. Um, and it's just like if I was out with the family or whatever, um, or I saw something and I brought it back home for the, them to try it. Honest um, feedback from your ki- honest kids. Yeah. yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And it's like, well, I know what this product does. I know what this product does. Um, I wonder what would happen if you combine these two, like from a scientific point of view. Yeah. Um, so this product is is going to make the dough spread out. This product is going to make it rise. What happens if you add yeast into it? Um, and then looking at, especially looking at standard recipes. So looking at, I looked at the St. John's recipe for donuts. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the um, recipes I looked at to make the donuts that I make today. What is a St. John's recipe for donuts? It's just a standard, like oh, a okay. brioche dough. Okay, yeah. sweet But dough. like, I didn't know how to make a standard dough. Yeah. I know how to make yeah. a, a baked one, like a batter yeah. for it. Like a two bowl method, or one bowl method, sorry. Um, but to actually make a standard dough, I didn't know how to make it. So I'm like, well, how do you, how do you make it? Yeah. But you, you just did that on your own? Yeah. Because like, I, we haven't, I don't think that, we haven't done an episode on really like, we did an introduction episode into ourselves, but obviously with the small size and baking and stuff, mm. I'm completely self-taught as well in terms of qualification. But when it came to sweet though, once I realized that there, there was more to life, I went to Bread Ahead and I did their sweet dough course one day. And I think I did their bread course one day. They're only half day courses. Yeah. Yeah. They cost you a little bit of money, but to just learn this through like trial and error. Yeah. I went in there, intensive course, right? So you're telling me butter, sugar, whatever. And at the time, my, my man was firing hundred miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Still had to go home and do the trial, the error, the this, the that, what, what can you afford? Mm. Yeah. They're giving you these little, you know, like brioche um, sugar pearls that you find on top of stuff. I was yeah, like, yeah. right, what can I get that, that gives you that kind of thing, whatever. But to tell me that you just did, this is mind blowing to me to just be like, oh, yeah. I found a recipe and I was like, yeah, how can I? How can I do this? Yeah. That's that dedication. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess it kind of came out of lockdown, so... Time. Yeah, you had time yeah. on your hands. I remember Ravneet Gill, so she had done a cookie oh, recipe. Ravneet. Um, she, yeah, you love Ravneet Gill. Yeah, she's, she's pregnant. She's, oh, congratulations. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's, she's a superstar. Like, And we met and connected through that time period, like over the internet. Um, so she did a cookie recipe. So I was like, okay, these are the elements. I is that Sugar I, I Love that. You, Ravnik? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was, was like... And the Pastry Chef's Guide. Yeah, yeah. Pastry Chef's Guide. Yeah. Um, so that, well, I can veganise this. I can make it gluten-free. Veganise. Um, <laughs> so I did that. And then she did a, um, the LPC, Lazy Person's Cake. Yeah, okay. So I did the same with that. Um, and then she did, um, oh, what is it? A salted miso caramel tart. And right. I did the same with that. So then when it came to uh, making the donuts, I was like, well, let me get a donut recipe. Hmm. Let me see what other people have done for gluten-free donut. Let right. me see what people have done for a vegan donut. So yeah. get all the recipes together. There's like a common theme between them and just trial it. Mm-hmm. So I trialed all the recipes and they all failed. <laughs> but then I was like, actually, I like this element in this recipe. Mm-hmm. This flour blend, these two elements seem quite good. If I take yeah. these quantity and you don't like, just take a little bit from each, yeah. put it together and it started to take. And I remember when I made that first recipe, I had about three or four attempts that just flopped completely. Yeah. And then one was okay. And I made it, I fried it, and I went to bed. I was like, I'm not going to get my heart broken tonight. <laughs> I'll go to bed and let's leave it. And yeah. come back in the morning. Got back, got <laughs> off in the morning, kids went to school. And I remember picking it up, like breaking it open. Like it's all on Instagram. Yeah. I like taking a bite and I was like, rah, this is, <laughs> this is a donut. This is it. Yeah. This is it. I think I may even shed a tear actually that this is, it's not right. Yeah. It's not perfect. Like, this is something. Yeah. Right? And then it's just being obsessed. 
So you said, what does it take? It yeah. being obsessed so, yeah. and getting excited and wanting to do it for people. Like I always say, reference my family. They're the reason that I started the business because I'm not a baker. Yeah. I've not got any qualifications in baking just um, from the school of hard knocks. <laughs> but um, I, it's like an extension, like the people that I make for, yeah. so people like yourself, when you are restricted, when you're told you can't have certain foods, automatically, you want the foods that you now can't have. Yeah, like trust me. Give me pasta yeah. every day of the week because I know it's going to mash me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You Do you know what I mean? Sourdough it. bread. Yeah. I was shooting my mouth about sourdough bread on the internet and then now I'm like, Do you know what? Give me, a, give me the crustiest <laughs> bread you've got going. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, I want to do this for you. Yeah. I want, I love the fact that when people come to, to get donuts from us, I can't have it because I'm vegan. Oh, no, no, they're, they're, yeah, they're vegan. Yeah. Um, I can't have it because I'm gluten-free as well. It's like, oh, no, you can have it. Yeah. Remember, I did that in Selfridges once. And a woman, I remember taking out her earphone when I said it was vegan. And then she cried when oh, I said it was gluten-free. Yeah. And, like, that feeling that you Keeps get you from going. that is like, yeah. right, yeah, I need to keep doing this. Like, I love that feeling. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's that obsession. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're getting there, we're getting there. And I remember even I, I even did a pop-up in September. Uh, was it last year? Oh, last year, so it's almost a year ago. Um, and the, the but the donuts that did that like, pop up were rubbish. I thought they were the boom. Like yeah. I thought they were so good. <laughs> they were greasy, overcooked. Yeah. And from where I've gone from September to, now, to yeah. where I am now is completely different. Yeah. So uh, you yeah you had a stall most recently at the free from yeah and free the, from the, the keys are going out the door the, so to the point where you had to go back and throw more. Yeah, they sold me out like. They bought everything, man. Yeah. Um, it's a ready-made market, obviously. Yeah. Like two thousand tickets were sold. We could, if it was, if it weren't hitting, though, you could have come yeah. home with donuts on your back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also, what, so what does it take then? Like, obviously, you're talking about trial and error, but and hours and improvement and stuff. But what does it take behind the scenes to get from taking a dud bunch of donuts out eight months ago mm. to yeah. now? Like, is that a team? Is that like? better equipment is yeah. that better yeah. suppliers like yeah. what what does it take how do you get here it's it's understanding like the errors mm -hmm. and trying to correct them so being like hypercritical mm -hmm. and most people will eat them and tell you like the family eat them and say oh, no, they're really good yeah and i hate that yeah you ask friends like, they were really nice <laughs> yeah no Fantastic. no they were fine yeah. it's like no like tell me exactly like what mm. was wrong with them um so being hyper hypercritical yeah knowing what a proper donut tastes like and to be fair, they're not like proper donuts. They're not like any donut I've tasted in this country anyway. Uh, but knowing what a proper donut tastes like. Um, and then, yeah, just putting in the hours um, just to try and tweak it. Uh, and also sharing that on social media. Mm. So bringing everybody along with yeah. the journey. Yeah. So it's like, I'm doing this for you. Like, I remember when I first made it, I was like, I've done it. Yeah. I remember doing the live and like, like, I've done it. Like, I've cracked it. So like you lot need to take it now because yeah, yeah. this is as far as I can go. I've got nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I've got nothing left. Yeah. Like help me. Like I was going to do like a crowdfund or something to like help me get this product out. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, buying better equipment. So I bought like a commercial, at least a commercial fryer. Uh, got better mixers um, and just looking at how mm -hmm. we can scale it up. But everything is to get the product to the people. Like yeah. it's not about, I've always said it's not about the money for me. Um, they're expensive. I think so. I think they are expensive, but I always break down the cost and be like completely transparent. Um, but it's like, this product is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I really want you to have it. Yeah. Like help me get it to you. Yeah. Like, I want to get it to you in the best possible way. Yeah. Malaka wants the world to have the product. No, if this is, but the thing, if when there's I any chance talking, that this business crumbles, it might be the end of Malaka. <laughs> it might be the end I'll, of Malaka. I'll keep it running. I'll be heartbroken. Are you joking? You'll keep it running. Are you actually oh, on my deathbed, I'll give you the yeah. recipe. Nah, I you love it. Take it off my the hand. fact that you've only had them, what, three times now? Yeah, twice. Or twice three or three times? times? Yeah. And it's literally like, no, no, no. Where is he? What market is he at this week? No, okay, how yeah. am I going to get there? What's going on? I said when I had it the when I had them in what February or April whatever it was Go I on. was like I'm having donuts for my birthday I don't want a cake I'm having donuts and then I was so busy and tired leading up to my birthday 
Ryan posted like a, a reel and I was like, what? Yeah, because every I completely Friday, forgot. Like my, I, yeah. was, I was so upset. I thought I was going to cry. Every Thursday and yeah. Friday, if anyone who doesn't follow Ryan, well, you should because now his details are in the show notes yeah. this episode. You will share. You bring the people along with the journey. Like, okay, it's, yeah. fr- it's frying day yeah. or it's baking day and get your orders in by this time, this day, cut yeah. off point, Malacca. Uh-huh. And then they get delivered or shipped out and whatever. You do yeah. the postal. You do the baked ones postal, right? Yeah, baked ones postal throughout the week, and throughout then the, the fried week. ones only on a Friday. Only on a Friday, yeah. and yeah. that as well. It's like part of the journey, so you know what's going on. You yeah. know, like how fresh they are, how they're being made. Yeah. And Ryan came and saved your day, didn't oh, he? Oh, like, made my birthday. I'm not gonna lie to you. It <laughs> was absolutely fantastic. I love that. Like, if yeah. I, if, if I'm able to do it. Yeah. If I've got the energy, if you're local enough, yeah, then I'll do it, man. Like nah. I, I, I want you to have it. I yeah. want you to have that experience. I loved it. It was great. It's interesting when you mentioned about like obsession because one of my favorite shows is Netflix Chef's Table. I refer okay. to it a lot. I really love it. And there was an episode with Nancy Silverton in LA. I think she runs um, Pizzeria on Mozart. She's got a restaurant in London as well. Mm. And part of her story, um, I don't actually think she started out as a baker. I think she was in a relationship and she kind of fell into the food world and mm. she needed something to do and she's really uh, well renowned for her baking and her bread mm. and she spoke about how she decided she wanted to make for example like a loaf of sourdough and she made that particular loaf of bread again and again and again and mm. again until it was like small iterations very small tweaks mm. every single time but her recipe is exact it's very exact so now when people love her product she knows what she put into it and she knows why people love it because it's sometimes one gram difference yeah. that makes the difference. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But this is the science of baking yeah. because yeah. I think a lot of people can't be bothered to bake yeah. because it's not as easy as cooking. Yeah. Mm. Like one gram here, mm-hmm. you know, a dodgy scale, mm. like <laughs> your butter being off is not the same as yeah. like your seasoning being a little bit off. Like mm. yeah. it's completely different. Mm. And I agree with you because I think I had that experience too whereby it's kind of, sometimes it can be hard in business as well to stick to your guns. Yeah. yeah. Like you've got a tiny bit of success and someone's like, oh, can you do this flavor that you've never done before? Yeah, and it's yeah. like, yeah, sure. Yeah. But you haven't done what Nancy's done and yeah. been like over and over again. Like mm. my lemon cake, won't lie, I can't fault it. Like yeah. I've tried so many recipes. I know what I like about certain ones. Certain ones I won't even bother trying because it hasn't got what I'm looking for in it yeah. going on. Yeah. Little additions that I've made over the years that I've changed, trial and error, exactly what you're saying. My family are not maybe as nice as yours in that whole, like, everything's nice yeah. realm. Okay. My mom don't think, I was going to say, I don't think mummy's going to lie. <laughs> mummy's not going to lie. So mummy's very I'm much gonna like, tell you straight. Mm, yeah. I don't think this is the one. But mm. yeah, it's that like obsession, not necessarily perfection, but with something. And if your something is making sure that people are like satisfied and happy and able to have something, then like this business will never crumble. Not on, not on Malacca's watch. <laughs> not on Malacca's no, watch. No, this is it. It's like, yeah. with, with all the new bakers that have come in to work with me as well, I'll just tell them straight. Like, I only know how to do what I do because yeah. I've made every mistake in the book. Yeah. Like, how everything. do you not get greedy? Like, in terms of, you've got a flavour range, you have already put brownies in the in the bin. Yep. Yeah. How do you not decide, like, okay, cool, I've mastered donuts now, right, let's go make pizza bases. Or let's go do this and let's go do that. Like, what keeps you grounded in your business and like has enabled yeah. you the success that you have with hyper focus? I just think it's um, it's not biting off too uh, too too much basically because mm. I, like I I've been in positions where I've said yes where I should have said no or <laughs> so many times yeah. and you, it's you won yeah you know what I mean <laughs> you won us up everyone's fast asleep you can hear like the synchronized snoring upstairs. <laughs> And it's like you one in that kitchen at two, yeah. three, four, five in the morning, 100%. like trying to get stuff done, tired, migraine, yeah. your feet hurt, your back hurts. And you're doing it for like a, you're sponsoring someone's event. So for you're free. not even getting paid. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, why am I doing this? So from that, or it's you who didn't sieve uh, the gram flour, for example. And now you've got like lumps of gram flour yeah. that are baked into your product. Or it's you that... Um, I don't know. There's there's so many different things. Like it's you that put too much, um, like topping on the donut. So when you're picking it up now to put it in the box you for can't. Selfridges, you yeah. can't because you have got your fingerprints all over this. So all of that stuff is <laughs> just being realistic. I yeah, guess. it's just like and because, I guess a level of being humble. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. knowing it, that you've got a good thing going on. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And it's yeah. not um, as I said, like the, the the driver for me is is not money related. I know the business can make money and it will make money. Like their product is amazing. Yeah. Um, 
but it's always been about no we need to get that reaction from people that's why i record the reaction videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's why i took your voice now yeah yeah pull it up there with the captions and stuff because i can wax lyrical about it all day yeah but if you are maybe unsure and you hear somebody else yeah. endorsing it it's like that's like gold yeah um so it, it, it's it is and it it's like repetition as well like you do the same thing over and over and over you get good at it yeah mm. eventually don't you yeah i think what the, what you said as well Holly, about being humble that you have to remove the ego with things like that to be able to receive the feedback mm. because if you're too precious about your product and you can't take the feedback you can't grow do you know yeah. what i mean because you could have stopped when you, i've cracked it i've got nothing left this is it and yeah, it's the yeah. greasy donut that you said yeah, yeah. <laughs> that you thought yeah. was hitting but it wouldn't be what it is now yeah, yeah exactly. if you weren't able to take that feedback yeah i mean it, the feedback you're not always able to take it like, at yeah. that point in time yeah plenty yeah. <laughs> of times that phone has got dashed like <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like the walk to go and get it and pick yeah. it up. It's like, actually, I need, I need that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, sometimes it's hard to hear the feedback yeah. when you've worked so hard as well. Yeah. But no, you have to. Otherwise, you, 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 won't, you won't progress. Yeah. So being gluten-free mm-hmm. <laughs> or gluten-avoidant. 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 Yeah. Um, for some people, it is gluten-free. Um, yeah. They are celiac. Their sensitivity can be very, very, very high. And mm-hmm. they don't just dish out the gluten-free, free from products of the year award. To anybody. And anybody. <laughs> to, you know, to anybody, mm, yeah. you don't necessarily, or I'm going to assume as a question to you, like, what does it take to be, um, like, respected in the gluten-free world, but also, like, maintaining a truly gluten-free product? Because mm. I know, say, for example, um, well, there was an incident with Pret, wasn't there? Yeah. Mm. And then they've had to change supplies, they've had to change labelling, they've had to change mm. all sorts of stuff. There's now law into Tasha's place. Law, yeah. Tasha's law, mm. Um, Like, how do you keep your certification? Like, what does it take to be purely gluten-free? You don't make anything else, so that, obviously, your yeah. environment is yeah. sterile. Yeah. But what else is there behind the scenes that you've got to be able to do or say about your product to make sure that celiacs and others alike yeah. are yeah. confident in buying your product? Yeah, I think it's recognising that you're selling to humans, number one. It's like you're not just churning out a product. Mm-hmm. Like you're selling to people who've got kids. So you're putting, they're putting their kids' life in your hands yeah. or their own life in your hands. It doesn't matter. You know, it, the thing about being a CLAC or being gluten intolerant is it's, it's indiscriminate. Yeah. It doesn't matter what your race is. It doesn't matter what your, um, your sex is, your gender, your religion, your age. It can happen to anyone at any time. So I think having that human element, like I always encourage people to like, if you've got any doubts, get in contact with me. Mm-hmm. Like don't, don't be shy. Um, Cause you'll get, sometimes you'll get, if they go into a department store to get my yeah. donuts, let's say, um, and they have a bad experience. Um, and you, I always find you get like two types, the ones that will speak up and be vocal yeah. and the ones that feel like they're being a nuisance so they won't say anything. And then yeah. they'll come back and email you. And I'm like, well, it's this, if you saw something, mm. say something. Like, yeah. don't don't accept See it. See it, say it, salted. Exactly, <laughs> exactly that. So it's um just recognizing that you're dealing with humans. So yeah. being able to talk to people in a way like that gives them the utmost respect, um, and recognizing that every product that you put out, you've built up this reputation. You've put like um, years in the game, skin mm. in the game. Mm-hmm. You could lose that. With yeah. one product yeah, that does yeah. something to someone. Protect it, yeah. So like trying to um inculcate it too com- to be frank, being gluten free is easy. It's just common sense. Uh, it was easy for us because as I say, my wife is gluten intolerant, mm. the kids were dairy intolerant, so we didn't have many allergens in the house anyway. Yeah. Everything was separate, everything was wiped down. And that's what I did for the seven and a half years that I was making them in my home kitchen in the house. Yeah. yeah. And when we moved to the uh commercial kitchen that I built in the garden it's a completely gluten-free environment. Now. Yeah. So anyone that comes in, you're not allowed to eat any food if it's got gluten and you, you go back to the main yeah. house. And it's just common sense. Yeah. It's like... You say that. Well, yeah, yeah I, know. I know. We have an episode coming up that um, might do some crowdsourcing for about like food hygiene yeah, and yeah. standards. Yeah. Because yeah. we, that's coming off the back of, there's been a few reviews lately that we've seen yeah. of restaurants that we've eaten in and we are mortified. Really? Yeah. And we're just like, that's just food hygiene. Yeah. That's not about necessarily like, you know, killing anybody because yeah, of an allergy. Yeah. That's just basic. Basic, basic but stuff. it comes from people being in the kitchen not remembering that they're serving human beings. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is it. <laughs> yeah. Right, so the common sense thing, as much as, yeah, that might sound a given and being humble and everything, I thought like that's still something that you have to be like, yeah, deserve praise for maintaining that yeah. environment and taking it seriously. Yeah. yeah. Because 
A lot yeah. of people are not. That's how we end up with incidents like massive corporate companies. Yeah. yeah. Not labeling things properly and running into these kind exactly. of problems. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, like the, the actual gluten free certification, sending them off to get lab certified, um, it's, it's done in a week. But I know, I know an, another donut company that makes gluten free donuts that hasn't got that. They don't state that on any yeah. of their products. Yet they've set up a gluten free kitchen. But they're not able to say that where our products are certified gluten free. Yeah. So it just makes you, it's mm. so easy to do. Interesting. Mm. So easy to do. Yeah. So why haven't you done it? Mm. Yeah. No, um, 100%. I feel the same way about just general, also starting in the home environment. Mm. Like, oh, yeah, was it this one of your little pet peeves? Oh, some of my pet peeves. Yeah. Like, it doesn't take much to call the council and have a separate fridge yeah. and mm. check the date on everything you covered. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's not it's not a lot, but a lot of people can't be bothered. They can't be yeah, bothered. Can't That's be actually bothered. what it is. You just can't be bothered. And it's, if you're going to get away with it, why not? Why but not? like you said, you're dealing with human beings and it only takes one Listen, listen yeah. I was living in fear yeah. of like, someone's going to get sick. Like someone's yeah. going to get sick. Like it's going to be out of my control. It's going to be, I turn my back for a second and yeah. a fly landed on something. Like yeah. it's going to, it could be anything. Mm. And it's like, that fear once you're once you're a human being mm. yeah. you can connect with other human beings yeah. but if you're a robot who just like is a, a mass yeah. person of a massive company you don't have that connection yeah. so i no. think that small business yeah. effect i think that's also not something to be overlooked in what you're doing no. which yeah. is very much like you dm you you get you yeah exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You exactly. DM 22, 22. i'm signing off anita but this yeah. is still me yeah <laughs> Exactly. There you are. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There you are behind the business, yeah. making yeah. sure because you do have that fear of like, I put my face on this brand. If anything, yeah. if anything, it's the fan. It's my yeah. face, then, uh, me on the line as well. Yeah. It's not just your, it's not your health and safety that's on the line, but it's also like yeah. my my family eat off this. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think from coming from a Caribbean background as well, like there's certain standards that we that you see growing up. Mm, yeah. Like with washing your be it washing your meat or cleaning your fish or, you know, they're always cleaning and tidying up something, especially when it comes to the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, always. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Keep so so you just want to rest, could yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of drilled into you. So yeah. it's almost like subconscious. And I've had people that have worked for me that I've had to let go. Cause I'm like, I don't understand how you're alive. <laughs> right? How are you alive? How are yeah. you alive and holding down a job right now? Because yeah. I don't understand what you're doing. Like why? Died of someone in right now. Like, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Well, we know who to get back for our food hygiene episodes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Back to gluten-free conversations. Mm -hmm. Malaka has recently discovered the pizza at Cafe Coco. Yes, the gluten-free gluten -free pizza, pizza at Cafe at Coco. Coco. Oh, yeah. God, it's fantastic. And these like are the it. only two, Bar 22 and Cafe Coco, the only two gluten-free products I'm hearing about. Okay. Those are the, because, alternating. Okay, yeah, no, because yeah. there's also the Garofalo pasta, which I do like. Okay, fair enough. And but that's like what you were going to cook at home. Yeah, and my babe... Mrs. Crimbles, but I don't know okay. if she's a real person. She's and to be fair, it's it's like, giving Aunt Jemima. Um, don't know Mrs. Crimbles. It's giving Midsummer Murders type of vibe down south. <laughs> but the Mrs. Crimbles gluten free cakes, mm. I do enjoy. It's like the bake roll tart specifically. Mm. Yeah. I like. But when it comes to gluten free products and my yeah. gluten free journey, journey, that's probably why I'm still gluten avoidant. Yeah. Because sometimes the gluten free offering is just it's not it. The pain is worth it for me to just go and eat the proper thing. Mm, I can't, mm. I can't cope with the gluten-free offering. So, mm. so who have you seen outside of donuts? Yeah. Or just generally, are there any heroes within the gluten-free food world that Malika needs to know about? Yeah. Or that you other gluten avoidant babes? Yeah, the other gluten avoidant babes need to know about. Yeah. yeah. That you're proud to platform. <laughs> so I've got to keep it real here, man. Okay. And this, this, this will come up again because I know one of the questions you're going to ask me at the end. Okay. But I've got to keep it real. There's not, there's not many yeah there are not many and like you're kidding yourself if you if you say that there are i, w I would <laughs> i have to be honest yeah like i want to go to italy um because i'm hearing really really good things about italy like italian pastries and italian pasta gluten free yeah oh yeah so my mother-in-law bought some it italian pasta in the airport yeah was like, it garofalo I don't know. I can't remember. Okay, because Garofalo is Italian, I'm sure. And that gluten free pasta is pretty good. Yeah, it was yeah. next level. Yeah. It was next level. You couldn't tell. Yeah. And this was like duty for like, it was a last minute dot com purchase. Yeah, yeah. Like the mugs my dad got me from Grenada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
um, so it was like it wasn't like she went to a dedicated yeah, it's just place. something that they, yeah. they just had mm. you know what I mean but it's, it was really really good but the only person I would say that is doing anything close to what I'm doing yeah. for the donut world is good effing pizzas oh okay yeah I'm following him I need to I need to get my order in because that deep dish pizza yeah Detroit style yeah it looks good I Next can't level. lie I have that saved yeah Next level. what are they all gluten free I have that yeah. saved yeah. <laughs> so so he's, he's usually save Malacca food he's <laughs> I think is he celiac or gluten intolerant? So he discovered it a few yeah. years ago. Um, Dijon or Dijon uh, Bascom. So do you know? Do you remember Jerry Bascom? He was a DJ. I don't no. know if he would. He was on Choice FM. It's his son. Gosh, Choice FM. Good yeah. It's a throwback. Oh, okay. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's his son. Yeah. So he had a bad experience eating supposedly gluten free or low gluten yeah. pizzas. And he just decided to make his own company. So he's been a customer of mine. Yeah. Always champion Borough 22. Like really, really good at doing that. Um, yeah. And he said he's going to work with me. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to work for me. He's going to work. Or he's going to do something himself. Yeah. Um, and he's ended up doing something himself. So he's made these pieces. And I remember when he contacted me. I was trying to find a video today, actually. It was September, I think, 2020 or 2020. After that greasy batch of donuts that you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. It must have been. Around that time. Yeah, I know. It was before. It was the year before. Um, so he contacted me and said he's doing doing pizzas. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. And he's like, oh, I'm going to make you some. But then it's that, that thing when someone says, yeah. it's like, now I have to go to yeah. your house to get it. It's long. like Yeah. It's kind of long. It, just because just my life is, my time is not my yeah. own. Uh, but I went there. Um and had a shock on my life. Like these pizzas. Yeah, they're like, oh, this piece is gonna be like rock cake mm. and then rock yeah, cake. Yeah, just have an oh, expectation. Great, great job, yeah. You have an expectation. Effort, yeah. It's like, yeah, exactly. Just <laughs> do a little pose. Sorry, Dijon, man, bro. It's, it's not you, it's not personal. Yeah. It's just my gluten free experience. Trying. Yeah. My gluten free experience in general. Yeah. And I didn't know, I thought he I thought he had said that uh, he does some gluten free and some are vegan. So I got the vegan one and I've got a couple of others. And when I looked at it, it looks like a proper... Yeah, yeah, yeah it does look like Instagram a Instagram looks like right a now. Yeah. It looks like a like, proper... It's got, do you know what I like? Well, my expectation now that I've gone to Cafe Coco is that if I'm going to have a gluten-free pizza, I need it to have a crust that looks like there's life in it. Yeah. Even if it's just a little bit. I know yeah. it's not going to look like a normal pizza, but the ones that look like complete flatbreads, yeah. I'm over it. Yeah. Like, I'm so over it. No, mm. this, this, this is ridiculous. To the point where I, I didn't know until I got there and yeah. he said, no, they're all gluten-free. And I was like, raw. And then I got there in the car, picked it up. And the way this thing handled. Yeah. It was like, the, it the was. The feel, the yeah. touch, yeah. It was like normal yeah. dough. I ate it. So I would actively choose his pizzas. Yeah. I, I, I'm not gluten intolerant. You don't have to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah I would choose his pizzas yeah. like every day of the week. So he does, uh, they're all gluten free. He does some that are vegan as well. Um, and some that aren't. Mm-hmm. But they are amazing. So they're as good as my donuts, yeah. I think. How yeah. do we get them? Uh, so he is, I think he's just gone on Deliveroo. Yeah. Okay. So he's moved out of it. He was making them in his um, flat in Broccoli. Yeah. But he's now got a, a, a unit that he shares with some Town. other okay. makers in Cannon yeah. Town. So. Um, and, and, and Dine as well. And, and Dine, sorry, yeah. yes. You're, you're doing And Dine as I'm well, right? I'm doing yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry. So And Dine actually, um, they have a really good gluten free selection. Yeah. And you can get it delivered okay, to your cool. house. I was on an um, Uber Eats delivery ban. For much of this year, okay, I think but I've actually downloaded <laughs> the Undyne app, so yeah, yeah, it's I decent. You'll today. get money off your first two orders. Yeah, okay, um, so no more. Well, we'll, put, we'll put Ryan's referral codes in the in yeah. the description box below, so we can get all these goodies. <laughs> yeah, all yeah, it's decent, and yeah. they're, like they're they're made. The good thing about Undyne is like it's local made people yeah. like myself mm, yeah. who are making it in their houses. Yeah, like these amazing products, and they've had a real push. They've even actually they've even been employed Dijon. Yeah. So he's rounded up as many gluten free people. Um, people as as yeah. possible, and they've got like a really good selection of gluten free products now oh, nice. that you can try. Yeah. Um, and get it delivered to your house. Okay. Cool. Um, so they're decent as well. So they they would be the only two, but mm-hmm. Dijon, from eating them. Yeah. Like hand on heart, they are phenomenal. I don't know about this other place. Cafe Coco. Cafe Coco. Yeah. No, like the pizza is good. Like it's actually got by. I don't know if it's better than his ones. Okay. I need to try it out definitely gonna try i want to try that that deep dish one because it looks banging i'm not gonna lie are they completely gluten-free so if you are a celiac no because they cook it in a gluten-free sorry they cook it in an environment that is not gluten-free yeah so it's gluten avoidant friendly but if you are like 
yeah, if you are um, like a celiac or something, then you can't eat there. Yeah. Because they, they say that okay. they're cooking it in that environment. But the pizza itself is made with a gluten-free dough. Yeah. It's yeah. just the cooking environment is not celiac friendly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Okay. I think that's our gluten-free conversation. I believe, Mike, you have a few extra questions? Yes. So, those that are listening, and Ryan, as you know, mm-hmm. we like to talk some stuff on this podcast some okay. sometimes yeah we, just like to, we like to express ourselves mm-hmm. a little bit so what we would like you to share is your controversial food opinion what is it that's on your heart on your chest that you want to talk about that maybe it might rub a few shoulders the wrong way why you got your arms crossed Harley? because <laughs> <laughs> i'm used to having to defend my opinions on this podcast okay, so yeah, i just true. want to see what ryan's bringing to the okay. table so i've got to say like most gluten-free food is dead like it is Who's the deadest? What have you tasted that just ain't hitting? Do you know what I mean? If we're going to call a spade, let's call a spade a spade. Oh, man, I (laughs) can't even remember. Like, I can't remember Oh, really? Yeah, because it's like, it's... Like, what are you trying to... Who are you trying to convince that this is... Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did you guys ever go to Niche? Gluten-free dining restaurant? Okay, fair enough. When you go there, let me know. Okay. Or if your wife ever goes there, let me know how you guys feel about it. Because my experience... (laughs) <laughs> where where were they based? Uh, Islington. Okay, no, yeah, Islington. Islington. Like yeah, we went to one back in the day, and it was done. It got. I'm pretty sure it got a Michelin star. Is it is it Aldrich one or something like that? Aldrich? No, it's not okay. that one. Dominic's. Okay. Dominic's one. It was in over in on Westbourne Grove. Okay. But it had a very short life. Okay. Because the ingredients they used, I think it was just expensive. too expensive. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the was food things? was amazing. Okay. It was vegan and gluten free. There was one gluten free bakery. This was before before our time, sweetheart. Yeah. Um, that I loved. I've just gone on the Instagram and it's actually yeah, closed down um, in what, November. What was it called? It was Pearl and Groove. Oh yeah. Like on Port Bella Road, uh, near Port Bella Road. It was mm-hmm. on Exmouth Market. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Maybe it was on Exmouth Market as well, but I had it in Notting Hill for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was amazing, but it was. I I feel like with gluten. F- well, with allergen food, you get one, you lose the other. Yeah. Their food was full of nuts. Okay. okay. Like, the, the overcompensation. Full of nuts. Everything yeah. was almond this, pistachio that, macadamia. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I get it, like the structure, like the oil. Like, I know what you're working with here, yeah. but... Mm. Trying to add texture back into it, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think it yeah. just like... I walked in there, it was very much like, this is not a uh, this is not safe space for everybody. Yeah. yeah. It was fine for me. I was just trying it out. This is again kind of what you were saying, like eating other people's products, seeing what yeah, was going yeah. on. I never really went down the gluten free route in terms of like my bacon. I know. You did make me did you make me a gluten free cake? I made you some gluten free stuff. Oh yeah. But I wasn't like doing gluten yeah, free. Yeah. Like active. Actively doing gluten free. I think I made you a gluten free um the boxes that we blonde yeah, yeah, yeah. the cookies. But yeah. I had to say to you, you need to eat them. Today or tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, you did say that. I said you have to the life from them is not the no, same. It's not the same. Not yeah. the same. So, not the same. Um, yeah, that was a good bakery, but yeah, yeah they're gone. So yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's prob- you're probably right. I'm struggling. That's why I'm gluten avoidant. Like I find it it's very, hard. very hard when the offering the the pickings are slim. Yeah. To be quite frank, even like what is on the supermarket sh- um, supermarket shelves. It's only recently that I've been able to appreciate like some of the Warburton's products and mm. not even all of the Warburton's products hit. Like the crumpets are terrible. Yeah. But like the flat bread kind of squares, I love them. Yeah. They're good. They still need to be toasted, yeah. which is what I find with a lot of gluten free breads. But yeah, gluten free. Yeah. It's definitely growing. Like it's interesting what you said about Italy. Yeah. Because Harley was showing off that she spent some time in Italy. And I've, I've kind of been hesitant over the last few years because I want to go there and be able to enjoy it. I don't yeah. want to go to Italy and be eating grilled veg and fish. I want to eat pasta. I want to eat all of that good stuff. Yeah, so yeah. if they're really like building up their gluten-free market. Yeah, you know, like, there's a couple of like influencers, like Instagrammers who have yeah. been over there and they've got like guides and stuff. If yeah. I can remember, I'll send some your way. Okay, but, um, cool. I yeah. feel for you. Yeah. I feel for you. Yeah, me too, yeah, man. It's, like, not, it's, it's not... It's not easy, easy. because... It's tough. It's the same like... My dad's just a picky eater. Yeah. But even just navigating some of that, less so now, more so when I was younger, of just being like, going to a place and not just having to eat the one thing on the menu. Yeah. Mm. Like, I commend that you have a range. Yeah. yeah you have yeah. a range of things that people can enjoy mm. and you don't just have to love glazed, glazed yeah. donuts. You can have flavours yeah. and you can yeah. have all different things. Because yeah. that's, that's also, we spoke to um, Kerry a couple of episodes back about sense of taste and like what it takes to have flavour and she was very much talking about like trying loads of different stuff mm-hmm. just to see what she likes. And I think yeah. 
and and the mental health aspect of not being able to just yeah. have everything. Yeah. And I'm always moaning to, on, on Instagram about you're it always it's moaning. upsetting. Yeah. 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 So in order to find someone yeah. who is like super niche in what you're doing and within that be able to like maybe five of them. Yeah. Mm. That is like yeah. Yeah, bigger than that. If you go to Italy and you're sitting there, you've spent all that money to get there and you can still only eat one, one thing. thing on the menu. Like, yeah, it'd be upset. Well, it's, I, th- I guess another extension of that is is just that if it's gluten-free, like the, the shows that I've done, like um, the markets that I've done, when you, when you go into the gluten-free arena or even gluten, especially gluten-free and vegan, it's like every think then becomes like a health product yeah and it's like i remember one yeah. i did a pop-up no in shoreditch yeah. yeah pop-up in shoreditch and a guy was i'm in an iron about buying the donuts this was the baked ones yeah uh he bought one and he came back 30 se- seconds later yeah. and bought more and he was like oh man it's so dirty so <laughs> dirty i want more i want more yeah. it's like i know i feel you bro like yeah. I, I get it because everything that i've seen that's been yeah. consumed it's like framed as being healthy yeah. or and it's like no you just sometimes you just want something that yeah. is just pure filth yeah it's just a little badness yeah yeah just yeah i was like why are you eating donuts like how you know your situation i said they're gluten-free babe i don't know what you're talking <laughs> like. yeah. she's like oh really i have to bring one to her and she's yeah. like this is so nice i can't i was really angry when i saw you eating those donuts. 12 donuts yeah, yeah. she's like i couldn't believe it and i was like they're gluten free yeah. don't worry about yeah. it but that leads me on to my second question mm-hmm. What is your guilty pleasure? Oh. You know mine? It's yes. a dirty kebab, the plastic meat. What was your one again, Harley? You had a couple. I had a couple. I think like McDonald's breakfast. Yeah. The pancakes. In the drive through. Yeah. Mm. Mm. What's yours, Ryan? It's a guilty pleasure. Like I'm I think I'm a closet Italian. <laughs> because it's like gelato, pizza and pasta. Yeah. But like, I could smash through all three of those yeah. in one sitting. Is that also because like you don't get them at home. Like your family can't enjoy it. Is that like a secret eat? Is that like a, I'm gonna go and eat dairy and gluten? Yeah, and yeah. And <laughs> I, I shop at home. Like I do the Ocado shop. So yeah, will... yeah, but you're not gonna bring it into the. Imagine you like your children are there. Like Dad, no, we... rags. No, like... sorry, my kids have grown out of dairy now. Oh, so okay. they they can they both grew out of it when they yeah. were seven. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a short lived thing. Yeah, but I am dairy intolerant to a degree. I think most people from yeah, the am. Caribbean yeah. are anyway. Um. But no, yeah, I'll just buy it rags. Like, um, what's this pasta dish that you're indulging in? Oh, it's any anything like fresh pasta. So in the lockdown, um, yeah. What was they? What are they called? Paso. It's oh, okay. Paso. Yeah, we yeah. used to get their kits in. They've got a restaurant. Is it in that near Old Street? Yeah, near Old yeah. Street. That's okay. it. Yeah. Um, and it was. Uh, so now we get pasta evangelist. I think. Mm. Yeah. Um, but anything like that, man, it's just actually. So that and like noodles. I could, there's a, there's a list. These little guilty yeah. pleasures. I want filth. Dirty. I want like topsy. I want like your wife doesn't know that you're eating this in, in the in the back well, of the it's garden. Got, it's got to be gelato then, because I could smash gelato. Like, <laughs> I could smash like fr- there's there's one in particular, okay? okay. And they they do gluten free cones. Yeah. Um. So lots of like people have gone there like gluten free Instagram is Grom. Oh, okay, they do gluten free. Co- they sell that in the supermarket, right? They sell it in the supermarket. Yeah. But if it's their pistachio. Okay. Grom pistachio ice cream gelato, not ice cream. Yeah. Gelato is ridiculous. I can see. I can see. It's ridiculous. Fireworks coming out of Malacca's ears. Yeah. It is insane. Yeah, I think I've seen it in Waitrose. Hmm. It's definitely on a card, okay. and their okay. actual shop is Piccadilly Circus. Okay. I've never, okay. never bought anything from them, but. I will go. I've got I'm a even go there gluten-free afterwards. shop to do in Ocado, So yeah. yeah, the pasta. Where um, can we find you? How can yeah. we taste these donuts? Are we even going to get to taste one on the air, Harley? <laughs> we can taste one Because it's want. wafting into my nostrils. It's driving me insane. Is it? Yes, I can smell it. I'm not even joking. Um, so yeah, where can we find you? Where are the donuts? Okay, so... What's the deadline for Malacca's um, <laughs> understanding yeah. of okay, when to so order? The deadline is, is like Wednesday lunchtime. Like the, 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 I'm not doing a, you have to get the link at 6pm on Friday anymore. The link is open. All okay. Time. So as long as you order by Wednesday, you will get them that Friday. Okay. We order them where? Order them, yes. Yeah. That, that's okay. <laughs> important. Very important. At borough22.com. Okay. Very easy to remember. Yeah. Borough 22 is the 22nd borough in London. That's where we're based, the Royal Borough of Greenwich. Yeah. We also retail our baked donuts in South yeah. Regal Bakery mm-hmm. as well. So you can go there and uh, get your hands on them there. 
in the bakery that is behind Lola's Cupcake, not the one on Duke Street. Okay. And then we retail at the Broca in Broccoli, Marmello Kitchen in Leighton, and Wolfie's in Robert Hive and Wolfie's in. Okay. Sorry, Pavilion in uh, Victoria, Victoria Park. Park yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every Saturday we can give up. Baked so nice there. That's like on Saturday morning. Ryan's the only person on, awake on Instagram before me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and by the time I wake up, I watch his story and it's like, done. Yeah. Like, done. Delivered to all of these places yeah. already by like 6 a.m. Yeah. on a Saturday morning. Yeah. So, yeah. Check you out on Instagram. They can follow your journey because you're always sharing bits and bits. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I'll keep always. doing that. Like, yeah. as, as much as I can, share the journey, keep everybody involved. Mm-hmm. And when it's time to bring my cap out, and yeah. hopefully everyone will pitch in and, and we'll elevate together yeah yeah that is so useful oh thank you well, so much yeah thank you for, having me. Thank you really for joining really us yeah. yeah nice to finally meet you too yeah place. we're gonna have you back for now what food hygiene we're gonna have another conversation yeah. about like scaling businesses when you've got your shop yeah, for sure yeah. and now malaka wants to taste test taste us his donuts yes which yeah, ryan so really. kindly kindly kindly, kindly yeah. bought with him i have actually not had them yeah. because the times when you've had them I've been Ew. unavailable. Yeah. So if you want to see us enjoy these donuts, if you want to see the donuts that we're talking about, they will be linked in the description of this episode, but there will also be a real, if you're yeah. listening to this the week that it comes out, Malaka's posted a real before enjoying her birthday donuts that you mm-hmm. can go back and have a look at if you want to see more flavours, more range. Yeah, let's go taste these donuts. So, um, bye guys. Bye guys. Bye guys. <laughs>